What's up everybody, welcome back to Everyday Builds. Today I'm gonna to show you how I built this air cleaner for seven bucks. Before we hop into this build, I just wanna say that I was just winging it through this whole video. I didn't have any plans. I watched a couple YouTube videos and got ideas from that but I really just designed it on the fly. With that being said, I think it came out amazing. It looks good and it works really well. I've been wanting an air cleaner for a while now. I didn't wanna go spend the money on one though and I had some box fans laying around so it just made sense to build my own. The only thing I had to spend money on were the two filters that are in here, which was about $7. I had the plywood scrap already and I already had the box fan. So before we get into it, if you like this video, you find it entertaining or helpful, please don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. So my first objective was to create a box to go around all of this. So I first had to get the measurements and strip the fan down to it's just bare essentials. Ooh, nice planer stand. Once I had the fan disassembled, I could then go ahead and cut out the pieces that's gonna make up the box that will house the filters and the fan. I promise at some point, this will start to make sense. This box is gonna experience a lot of vibration over its lifetime. It's also gonna be hanging above my head. So I wanna make sure that it's not gonna come apart. So in order to do that, I'm gonna apply a lot of glue. I'm gonna hold it together temporarily with some brads and finish it off with some screws. Here are those screws I was talking about. Here I'm cutting strips that will create a gap between the fan and the filters. You can see the strips installed here. That filter is gonna sit right on top of those, creating about an inch and a half gap between the fan and the filter. For some unknown reason, I have no footage of me installing those strips, but you get the idea. And here's where I ran into my first issue, and that is that these filters are a little bit smaller than the size of the fan. So there's a gap all the way around, and it can allow that filter to kind of drop onto the fan. So I created these little spacers to help keep it snug and stay centered. And here was probably the trickiest part of this entire build, and that was handling the electrical wires. I probably could have wired a new switch into this, but this one worked perfectly fine, so I decided to make it work. So my solution was to drill one hole out one side where the knob and switch mechanism would go, and then to drill a hole on the opposite side where the actual electrical cord would go. After a little cleanup, I zip tied everything to the frame of the fan to make sure that none of the cords would come loose and get entangled in the fan. Now that I have the basic construction of the box assembled, I now need to create a face frame that's going to hold the fan into the box. And if you've never tried this trick to create a radius, I highly recommend it. It's quick and simple. Thank you. 
When installing this face frame, I think it's a face frame, kind of. I chose not to glue it down and just screw it instead. Because if this fan ever dies, and it probably will, I can just take this face frame off, slide in a new fan, and we're good to go. I chose to go with a two filter design. One which is a fine filter which is going to grab the really small dust particles and then what I'm calling a pre-filter to grab anything bigger before it gets to that fine filter. I needed some sort of rear door that would hold the filters in but that I could take off so that I could change the filters really easily. It also needed to obviously have a hole in the middle so that it could draw that air through. I accomplished that by doing a series of drop cuts on the table saw and then I'll finish it off with the jigsaw. Now I just had to clean up the corners where the rounded table saw blade couldn't get to. Instead of using hinges back here, I'm actually going to use a biscuit joiner to create some notches and then use biscuits to basically pivot into those notches to hold the door in place. Just trust me on this one, it actually came out super cool. Here I'm just attaching a spacer block to the back of the door in order to keep that pre-filter centered. And here's what I was talking about, using those biscuits as a way to kind of lock this panel into place in those biscuit slots using a screw as a pivot point so that I can rotate it in and out of the slot just like that I did this on all four sides and it worked perfect One of the final things to wrap up on this is this switch, which there's no great way to mount it because it mounts from the top into the fan assembly. So I just punched it through the side, made this wooden donut looking thing, and kind of created a friction fit with the number of times I wrapped electrical tape around it. I know it's not perfect, but this whole project is really imperfect. And I mean, look at that knob. OEM. The last thing to do was install these hanging cables which were conveniently left over from the UFO light install that I did. Check out that video in the top right corner. The bracket that I'm hanging this on actually belonged to that yellow extension cord in the background, but it worked perfect for this. I plugged this into the same outlet that my lights are hooked up to, which turns on automatically when I come into the garage. So when my lights turn on, my air cleaner turns on. This way I don't even have to think about it. If my lights are on, my air is being cleaned, which gives me nice, breathable, healthy air.